Hello, welcome back to our channel. My name is Nigel and this is Off Grid Van Life where we look at off grid power, van conversions, basically anything to help people, to help you to get on the road and to find that adventure. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at the benefits of using an active balancer versus not using an active balancer on a DIY lithium ion phosphate prismatic battery cell or battery set rather and so this is the active balancer that I've been uh, working with the last few weeks had a few teething problems with it right at the start where I had a couple of faulty units from the manufacturer and uh, sent them back and they sent back replacements so I just got this new replacement now I fitted one of these into the the life pure 4 battery in my camper and it's made a huge difference. My cells are the same voltage throughout. Doesn't matter the state of charge, whether they're fully charged or, or whether I've started drawing from them or whatever the case is, uh, they are matching in their voltage is great news and uh, the main reason why I started looking into this was because I had one particular cell that just wouldn't keep up with the rest it was kind of always just lagging behind a little bit in this voltage so if the other cells were like 3.65 volts this particular cell would be down to like 3.42 volts somewhere around there and I took the battery out top balanced the cells ran a couple of tests on each of the cells all of them performed flawlessly in terms of the capacity testing this one particular cell just won't maintain the same voltage so that's what got me into looking into these active balances and then in addition to that I've just seen on quite a few forums this week guys chatting about active balances where that makes a difference in terms of the capacity of the battery or not and so what I thought is well I have this battery sitting on my workbench here and why not just connect it up I've top balanced it to 3.65 volts and the cells are matching I've done capacity tests on these they come out at 280 amp hour cells and uh, they pretty evenly matched in terms of their capacity. So I ran a couple of uh, capacity tests in uh, just sort of side by side and uh, they all came out around about the same sort of uh, capacity. So 280 to 285, somewhere around there. So we'll call them 280 amp hours. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect everything up here, put them all in series, uh, create a battery out of them, connect the BMS up, get that going, uh, set the low voltage disconnect on the BMS, because this is a brand new 100 amp um, uh, daily BMS smart BMS with Bluetooth and so I'm going to connect it all up then I'm going to run a capacity test with this guy uh, just probably at like 15 amps 10 amps somewhere around there I'm not sure leave it overnight and then I will see how we get on with it and what capacity we get out of it once I've done that I'll then charge it back up I'll connect the active balancer and see how we get on with that so let's go Okay, so we've got everything connected up here. So bus bars on, batteries in series all connected. We've got the BMS just mounted here, just temporarily uh, for this test. Got the temperature probe in there. Got the Bluetooth uh, dongle connected there. Balance leads all connected and everything's working fine. Got two cables connected onto here for the tester. And so this is the tester that I am going to be using here. So I'll just talk you through. So the first thing that I do when I go to turn these testers on and start using them is uh, I just dial turn these dials all the way back down uh, to zero essentially because so that it doesn't start testing uh, before I have reset it so I just make sure when you hold this reset button here you can see that number there uh, the smaller number that is your uh, your counter for how many amp hours you've drawn so the cells are at a uh, sum of 13.3 uh, volts so uh, they've kind of settled and balanced there and then I just turn the top dial here and you'll see the fan starting to spin and kick in there and I'll dial that up to probably about 12 amps or thereabouts is a good uh, rate of discharge and that's basically it I'll just leave that now uh, overnight it'll take the best part of probably around 24 hours um, to deplete the battery and I'll just leave that running basically until the BMS uh, 
cuts it off at the low voltage disconnector. As soon as a cell hits 2.5 volts, uh, the BMS will shut it down and I'll then come back and check what it looks like, then recharge the battery, and then we'll connect the active balancer on just to see uh, whether we get more capacity out of the cells if we have an active balancer connected. So uh, I'll leave that running and then I'll check in with you guys once it's done its thing and we'll get the next one going. All right, so the first test is done. So what, I'm, what I always do with these tests is I always dial the dials all the way down and then I'm gonna turn this up so that you can see what's going on here. And then if I push this little button on the bottom right corner here, let's have a look here. 280 amp hours on the nose. Lol, it's gonna keep uh, shouting at me as long as it's connected and has no voltage. Uh, Cause obviously the BMS will have just kicked it off. But yeah, that's done 280 amp hours on the nose with that tester. Uh, so that's pretty good going. So I'm just gonna unplug it here just to turn it off to stop it from beeping. And uh, now the next thing to do is to charge this back up to a full state of charge and then I am going to then connect the active balancer uh, to the battery bank once it's fully charged and then this will obviously be active balancing it then I'm going to run the same capacity test using the same tester to see what the results are and see if we get any more any better performance out of this battery using the active balancer so let's go Cool, we're looking good on the app there on the Dali BMS. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna connect up two chargers here, just because I want to get this battery charged up a little bit faster. And they're only 10 amp chargers, so I'm gonna just clear some space and connect up two of these guys and get this thing charging. All right, so we can see, I'll just come around to the side here and show you uh, over here, that little number there. So that is your voltage reading on the actual uh, uh, battery there. And then over there, that A there uh, is the amperage that the battery is charging by. So it's charging at 21 amps and we're just approaching three volts per cell on that. So got that all connected up there. We'll leave that. It'll take the base part of probably a day. Um, it'll be 24 hours thereabouts. So sometime tomorrow, it'll probably be fully charged and ready to go. So we'll just leave that cranking away like that and then connect up the active balancer tomorrow and get the rest of the test going. So I'll check in with you guys once it's fully charged. Okay, so the battery uh, charged overnight there. I just took the charger off and I hit record. I thought I hit record on the camera, but clearly I didn't because when I went back, once I'd connected all of this up, the camera wasn't recording. So there we go, rookie error. Uh, the, the joys of when you're producing these videos as a one man band and you don't have anyone to check whether the camera is actually recording or not. So I've got this active balancer now connected up here, as you can see. Um, the polarity is actually a bit reversed here so i forgot that the active balancer takes a positive from each of the cells and one negative so just the negative from cell number one so basically your outgoing negative uh, where you connect your bms you put that into the negative line on this on this active balancer and so when i prepped my cables i did one red cable and four black cables and then when i got you to actually install it i was like oh yeah it takes pos more positives than it does negative and only needs one negative just as a ground um, so i've used the wrong color cables for these uh, knowing that just for this test obviously if i was doing a proper install or something like that in a camper van or in a system then I would have the right colored cable so that you don't get confused. But just for the purpose of this test, I wasn't going to make up another five cables just for the test. So there we go. Uh, so I got that all connected up. Um, this uh, active balancer has no LEDs, no uh, display, nothing like that. The only way that you know that it's doing something is it has a bit of a, a buzz, like a hum to it. And so if you're installing it in a camper van or something like that, really you're gonna to wanna to put it in a locker or somewhere that you're not really gonna hear it when you're sleeping because it just carries on like this high pitch like whine almost. 
which is a little bit frustrating. I don't know exactly what it does inside there, um, why it has that sound, but yeah, that's how you know that it's on. And obviously uh, when I've had them previously, I tried this particular active balancer before and I got a faulty one from the manufacturer and it didn't make any sound at all and didn't do anything. So that's how I knew it was faulty. Um, so yeah, I got this all connected up, got the tester connected up again, just kicked it off. So it'll take the best part of probably 24 hours to uh, run the test. And then we'll come back and check in and see how it does, see whether it's performed uh, better than it did previously without the active balancer. So I'll keep you posted. Okay, so final test has done. I'm just gonna quickly reset that and lift this up to show you. Hopefully you can see there. But the final test with the active balancer did 200 and 81.83 amp hours so really interesting results um, on this daily green active balancer mainly just because it really doesn't do as much as i thought it would um, so pretty much i i initially had thought that maybe it wasn't actually balancing the cells and it wasn't actually doing anything because there were a couple of times when i checked while it was charging up or while it was there was a drawer being taken off with battery and stuff where the cells were not like crazy out of sync in terms of their voltage but they were, they were like 0.1 of a volt um, or 0 0.05 um, that sort of range uh, out of sync and the only time where all of the cells were absolutely balanced where they were like the exact voltage where the the delta was like one milliamp or, or even less um, between them was the one time when I charged the battery up to a full set of charge just before I did this last test um, it balanced them perfectly uh, but the trouble so if I get the app up now the batteries it's pulled uh, 282 or yeah call it 282 amp hours out of it the uh, the total uh, the sum volt on the app is 11.4 volts you can hopefully see there hopefully that'll show you 11.4 volts <coughs> on the um, uh, total um, voltage of the battery but then if you look at the bottom here hopefully you can see that um, but the bottom shows that the cells are just not balanced here we've got 2.818, 2 2.8, 2.8, 2.9, 2.934. Uh, and so there's a delta of 0.116 of a volt um, between the different cells, which I would expect the active balancer to have got all of those uh, even and balanced the cells, even though there's no draw being taken off the battery. That's the whole point of having this thing there. Um, and even though the battery is pretty much depleted because the active balance is connected directly to the cells I would have expected it to balance them uh, even with the BMS going to sleep and, and hitting the low voltage disconnect um, So yeah overall uh, Not that impressed with this daily green active balancer uh, I don't think it's worth the money. It's not a lot of money. It's like what $60 $70 somewhere around there really don't think it's worth the money um, clearly it doesn't add capacity to your battery or increase the capacity because the thing is what you get with these uh, batteries and, and the whole point of having the active balancer is if you've got four cells they don't all just draw down uh, on their voltage doesn't just drop equally like that so you have them sort of shuffling a little bit depending on the resistance in the cell and and if you have a stronger cell or, or if you have one cell that's a little bit weaker than the others it'll deplete that one faster than the others that sort of thing and then what happens is when you get to your low voltage disconnect because you set your low voltage disconnect at the a, a, an individual cell reaching a certain voltage so let's say 2.5 volts um, as soon as one of the cells hits that it'll just cut off the connection and it puts it into low voltage disconnect mode and will uh, put the BMS to sleep so that it conserves power and doesn't deplete your battery cells so you could have one cell that hits the 2.5 voltage uh, disconnect and then the others that still have some uh, juice in them and you won't get too able to use the the juice that's in the other cells so that was the whole point of having the active balancer is that it's meant to pull the power down and draw down from the cells evenly uh, so that you don't have that where you hit the low voltage disconnect um, but clearly it hasn't worked because it's not balancing the cells when you even after the BMS has hit the low voltage disconnect it's then not balancing the cells and this was this would have hit the low voltage disconnect sometime during the night it's uh, morning here now where I've just checked it after getting up in the morning and um, 
so I don't know how long it's been sitting there, but it's probably been sitting there for a few hours, plenty of time for this uh, actor balancer to be able to balance the cells uh, if it was working properly and if it did actually do what it's supposed to do. So yeah, all in all, would I recommend this actor balancer? No. Does it help to increase the capacity of your cells and, and get the maximum capacity out of your cells? No, don't think so. Uh, so there we have it. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this video has been interesting for you um, We've got plenty of others this, this sort of stuff on our channel here So if you are interested in in this sort of stuff, then I'd love you to hit the subscribe button We're gonna be building out a couple of vans over the next few months. So lots of that sort of content coming as well uh, But yeah, thanks for watching and remember to always chase that adventure. We'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers